Hey everyone, this is Ross. In today's video, we're gonna be planting more sugarcane. And I'm currently growing in the right outside of Philadelphia in zone 7A. Uh, we're a pretty cold place. It gets down to zero degrees Fahrenheit every year. And I'm able to perennialize sugarcane here in this climate. Um, you can grow sugarcane in a lot of climates. And I've certainly learned that this year, you get a harvest, even the first year from cutting. I have a, some cuttings here that my buddy Brian had sent me. Shout out to Brian. He has a number of these cuttings, by the way, for sale on Figbid, for those of you guys who want to grow sugarcane. Uh, this is what they look like. They're pretty big cuttings, nice and thick. They have uh, two nodes on them. Some of them have three. And you really just lay these down here in a trench and, uh, and plant it. And that's exactly what I did in the spring of last year, um, or this year, I should say. So the spring of 2019, I planted some of these. And actually, one right here that I dug up is pretty late to the party. It just now sprouted, and it just now put out roots. Um, so I think these things can take some time. They're not a guarantee to be successful. But I want to just basically cover this raised bed here just a small area of this sugar cane. And as long as we can protect the base of these plants, um, keep them pretty warm throughout the winter, uh, we're gonna have good success perennializing them here. I mean, it's not, you know, a guarantee, but uh, certainly it's not as difficult as people had probably thought this would have been. And uh, I'm really happy to be able to share these videos with you guys of my process because I think it gives people a lot of uh, ideas and hope. And um, yeah, it's just, uh, it's a great crop to grow, I found. Um, we juiced it this year very unsuccessfully. <laughs> I did make a cocktail out of this, uh, but basically I ended up putting the, the sugar cane itself in the in the drink in the cocktail i didn't actually juice it first like i actually had wanted uh, which is a bit of a shame but you know we may do and you can see after one year from cutting i mean this is what this plant looks like it's actually pretty incredible how vigorous this was how well it did um, i need to dig a deeper hole And then we can finish this off and cover this whole thing in. That's really all there is left. Um, by planting this in a raised bed, we're actually getting warmer soil temperatures. And the warmer the soil, the better your crop will be. As this is a tropical plant, they need tropical soil temperatures. So, um, I'm doing everything I can here in zone 7A to get myself warmer soil, a better crop. And you can do that with all your crops, right? All your different, all your different food sources or um, all the different vegetables and things that you grow. You don't really have to do this with some of the temperate things, you know, things like apples and pears, stone fruits. But, you know, subtropical things like your jujubes, your persimmons, your figs. Um, I try to increase the soil temperatures as much as humanly possible. You know, same thing with your um, things that you can also grow here, like ginger and turmeric. I think it's really a great benefit that if we were to, to uh, give our ginger and our tomatoes and our eggplants, pepper plants, more soil temperatures, higher soil temperatures. It's really simple. You do that, you're gonna be amazed by your success. And uh, I'm expecting the same thing with this sugarcane plant. I'm expecting a really big uh, plant next year. It was actually pretty easy to dig up. I didn't lose that many roots when I dug it up. And um, yeah, that's it. What we're gonna do now, 
Um, I don't have, I guess I have to, eh. <laughs> it's not working. But I wanna get some straw here. And we're basically, basically just gonna straw this whole thing in. And this is pretty much all the straw I can get out of this bale. I don't have a, a knife or scissors to get. To get this bale open, you know, they're, they're sealed. But basically you would want to every winter time, and we could further expand on this in another video, but you really want to cover this whole base with mulch, um, wood chips, straw, whatever. I mean, I'm gonna really cover this whole thing. Um, in fact, I may even in the future cover the side of this raised bed with some straw. Really get this thing in here insulated well. Keep this above maybe about 32 degrees. I know these things can handle, so far they've been able to handle 20 degrees Fahrenheit without any covering at all. So I think they're quite hardy. Um, you know, I think survival's definitely a lot more simple than you would uh, expect with these. And just overall, I recommend you guys grow it. I'm happy that I got this little section here. This is really not a wide section. It's three feet long um, by a foot across. So really only three square feet I'm giving up. It's gonna be pretty dense in there. But uh, yeah, again, if you guys are interested, check out Brian's listing on Figbid. He'll, he's selling the same variety I have here. It's a Louisiana heirloom. Um, so far, it's been hardy all the way down to 20 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, puts out a nice cane. It's a chewing type. Um, tough to juice, man, but you need a, you know, you need either a press or a heavy duty juicer. And overall, I recommend it. So I want to thank you guys here for watching this video. Uh, again, more straw is definitely needed. Don't skimp out on the straw or the mulch. Uh, we'll talk to you guys soon and see you for tomorrow's video. Check us out on figboss.com. Subscribe. Take care, everyone.